Well, hello and welcome to the Jedi Trials. Only through knowledge and meditation can we know the true way of the cards. I'm your host, D-House, here with the Rebel Spy, Mike. What's up? Uh, Mike, I'm so glad you're here. And uh, I'm so glad that we're recording. And I'm so glad you're recording your audio this time. <laughs> yeah. And I'm we're not going to talk about the so, fact that this is round two of this uh, this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not going to talk about the fact that we spent a whole hour uh, recording <laughs> this already. And we're trying again a week later. Yeah. Uh, and uh, ho- hopefully it's uh, actually working this time. <laughs> so we don't record a third uh, time. <laughs> it's literally like a podcaster's worst nightmare, right? Like yeah. you, you put all this work in and then you find out none of it mattered. <laughs> it's great. And now um, and now it's gonna be like like I you know, neither of us really want to talk about the same exact thing again. So hopefully I, I mean th- th- this this ep- the last episode was just a it was just a rehearsal. The, this this episode's gonna be way better. Yes, exactly. <laughs> totally. You guys aren't uh, missing anything. <laughs> Um, all right, so Mike, last week uh, you played in a store champ, and you took something a little unique. I did, I did. I, I what'd you play? I'm uh, bored with the decks that everybody's playing, so I wanted to play something different. Um, at all the store champs that I went to this season, I tried to play a different deck, and this deck was a deck that I built like the morning of. Um, just because I thought it was a cool idea. Someone messaged me on Twitter that they were playing um, Elite rex with a uh, single die sabine and i thought that was cool so then i was like oh yeah i've been meaning to try yoda with sabine um it would yoda with sabine and a bunch of like thermals uh so i put that you deck mean, together you mean the cards that sabine was actually designed to, to work yes, with those thermal weapons exactly yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> um and it was a lot of fun it was a really cool deck um uh, interestingly enough, all the games that I actually won, um, I won via mill. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what that was about, but uh, yeah. all the thermal weapons have, uh, you know, just like good discard sides. And, um, you know, so, between the illusion and the second chance, you're staying alive long enough to draw the game out, you know, to the last hands anyway. People aren't playing around a mill win condition. Yeah. So. Listen, we all knew if uh, someone was going to turn Sabine into a male character, <laughs> it would be Mike Rudin. So, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, You're the worst. my bad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you went 3-2, is that right? I went 3-2. I could have gone 4 and 1, but I like made just the most idiotic misplay of all time and just like threw the game. So mm, um, Scrubbed out. Yeah, I... My opponent was playing Rex Clone Maz, which is a really sick deck. Um, and he hadn't played a hit and run the entire game, and so I kind of like forgot about it. And we were going into the very last round. Sabine had like six health left. Um, and I had two second chances in my hand, and I was going first. Uh, Rex had two health left. So I elected to roll Sabine in with an ambush weapon trying to just get the two damage when all I really had to do was play second chance out of my hand and just prevent him from killing Sabine this, this that round. Um, so that was bad. Because <laughs> uh, then he plays hit and run and just like blows me up because I just I completely forgot that it was a card. Um, mm. Just one of those things. But it was still a fun, fun, fun event, fun to play a deck that you know nobody was expecting and that um, yeah. kind of caught people by surprise and was... It was fun to play. Um, I mean, I, as a person who who has in the past railed against Sabine a lot, um, like playing her with the thermal weapons is actually pretty fun. Um, and I mean, playing her solo is pretty fun too. But it's it's also pretty broken. And uh, like when when it works, it's pretty broken. And it's also yeah. But I I felt less bad about that because it was it was a twenty five point team. So I was, I felt a little bit like I was not you know sort of like cheating or like not playing <laughs> playing a you know a dumb deck but it was pretty dumb yeah <laughs> yeah for for someone who hated sabine so hard when she came out yeah. um, well okay you, you're now the creator of solo <laughs> sabine and uh the sabine mill deck i so i don't know mike <laughs> i i specifically hated sabine ezra <laughs> <laughs> okay just did not mm-hmm. like playing it was not fun yeah. with or against it yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm with you. I'm at this point now where like I'm not going to Nova. I I don't have any big competitive events that I'm working towards. So I just want to play 
just want to play fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to play, play fun stuff. Um, because I mean, legitimately the next thing I'll probably go to is a regional and that's in, you know, we're, we're I don't even know when, cause they haven't announced that. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so I've been having fun. I've been like just building weird things and thinking like, what, what could I bring to a casual night with all these guys that just, uh, is just crazy. Um, so uh, though I uh, I I have still been playing a lot of Kanan and Ayla built to last. Yeah, that that it's deck seems so super cool. Fun. I I haven't tried that deck yet, but I I feel like I have to. Man, I seems awesome. I'm a little surprised that more people haven't haven't caught on jumped on that bandwagon because mm-hmm. I think it's actually legitimately strong. The downside is that you only have 20 health. Yeah, but the upside is your removal suite. Um, like force misdirection in that deck oh, is, that is just so nuts. good because if you think about <laughs> you like, have, like Kanan, every symbol yeah yes you have every <laughs> symbol and like with kanan if you roll a focus and you have force misdirection in your hand and you've rolled out ayla as well yeah you can literally just remove anything they roll out because yeah. you've got range damage melee and indirect so it's like hey just roll it out that's Definitely. fine well, let me just remove this real quick it's cool um so there's no i don't know that there's any discard um but there's, I think there's everything else. So it's, I don't know. It's just, it's really fun. It, uh, I, the only time I've lost was to DJ Phasma because that indirect just adds up. Yeah. It's like, yeah. We only, when you only have 20 HP, like I, yeah. I, I can see that being a thing. Also, yeah. like, do you, does the deck struggle against like, like the, you know, the three wide vehicles and stuff like that that are like building over time and then eventually just like dealing just too much damage for you to handle? Uh, you know what? I haven't played it. I need okay. to. I need to play the vehicle matchup. Because so I'm, I'm thinking, I like, I imagine maybe it would the, be hard. Yeah, like maybe, maybe that's why it's not as popular in the sort of competitive metagame because vehicles are pretty popular. Yeah. So, yeah, I just I felt like uh, with mill being so prevalent that mm-hmm. vehicles would sort of lag behind, which would open up this opportunity for this this blue craziness um, where you have a character with five upgrades, um, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I yeah. definitely need to test it against more. I, I, like I said, I haven't been playing like crazy. I haven't been playing any tournaments. This is just casual. Mm-hmm. But uh, but it's one of those where like if I if I was going to Nova, if I was going to a big event, I would absolutely take it and um, and see what happens because I'm I, I enjoy it. And again, props to Matt Cousin now for the original inspiration for the deck. Uh, but and he's also a patron. So oh, nice. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Uh, <laughs> so for, before we jump in, uh, I, Mike, I have to make an apology. Uh, yeah, let's hear it. Apparently I'm just, I'm a bad podcaster and I'm terrible <laughs> at this game. Um, don't, don't look at my world's record. Just know yeah, that it's not, it's uh, I made a, I made a prediction about Gen Con that was so <laughs> wrong. It was one of my friends texted me and I was like, oh crap, I forgot I said that. Um, <laughs> Because I talk too much, but I made a prediction about Gen Con that Mill wouldn't make it past the top sixteen; that it would, it would, it would kind of plateau in the top sixteen. And yeah, and clearly how, how that I was out wrong. For you. <laughs> yeah, so wrong. In fact, that uh, Mill made up. Uh, I don't remember how many of the top cut, but it obviously won. Yeah, the it whole was thing. like I don't know four of the top eight or something like that. And yeah, two of the top four. Yeah, because because they they all had to you know play against each other because they were they got un- yeah, unlucky <laughs> yeah yeah um so i just thought like well that's uh you know um w- what do they say like do as i do not as i say <laughs> uh so uh or so, one of those ways anyways uh so sorry uh about that <laughs> <laughs> and then uh and w- we'll get to that in a second um but i, I do want to take a moment also to uh uh just say thanks to all of our patreons Hope you all enjoy the Bendu Power Action tokens. We were seeing like pictures pop up of those and the uh, the Obi One Alt Art. Uh, man, hope you enjoy those. If you want to check out, uh, it was on Beam on Etsy. Uh, so Etsy.com, uh, go there, search on Beam two words. Uh, uh, Jason Brown, he's the one who created those Bendu Power Action tokens just for us. They're exclusive to Jedi Trials, and uh, he does some really great work. So be sure to check out his shop. Um, He's, he does some really good things. He's a good friend of the show. Yeah, he's got some awesome stuff on there. Um, I I was rocking the the Porg Shield tokens that I have at pretty much all of the store championships that I went to. Because yes. why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Makes people feel bad about dealing damage to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, poor Porg. I just sit there and I'm just like, are you, are you really going to hit this Porg right now? And then they're like, yeah. I don't want to. 
I mean, I, yeah. I'll, some people are like, yeah, get that pork out of here. And then that's how I know I don't like that person. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, yeah. It's like that scene in the movie with Chewie and he's about to take a bite and those porgs are just looking at him like, really? Yep. And then, <laughs> oh, I love it. Perfect. Um, all right. So speaking of Gen Con, I uh, want to do a big congratulations to Andrew Cox uh, for winning the whole nice thing. Nice job, man. Well, well done, man, with uh, Yoda, Cassian, Anakin, Mill. Um, so I know I've given Mill players a lot of grief in the past, but Andrew's a good guy. Uh, we uh, we actually hung out with him at, at the First Worlds. That's right. And yeah, yeah. We, we hung out with him, with him at the First Worlds and then at Gen Con last year um, and a, l- a little bit at Worlds this year, too. Good dude. Yep. Good dude. Yeah, and at Gen Con last year, he was literally playing X Wing and Destiny. At the <laughs> yeah, same at the time, same time, which was fantastic. Hopping tables <laughs> and just trying to yeah do great. So yeah, was, that was like, awesome. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. So congrats to him. Um. The UK national champs are underway like right now. Mm-hmm. Um. It is happening. Uh. They had their Swiss rounds, and they've basically locked in their top sixteen. So by the time you're listening to this, it's probably uh, finished. But we are in the middle, and all we know is uh, who made top 16. We've got a few friends uh, in the top cut that we hung out with at Worlds Mm -hmm. and um, learned a lot about English culture by playing (laughs) code words or code names. Yeah, code names. (laughs) (laughs) So that was fun. Uh, So just looking at these top 16 decks, it looks like five mill decks and 11 damage decks, I guess. Uh, anything stick out to you, Mike? Uh, I'm loving the Sebulba decks. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, how many Sebulba decks are there, Mike? There's what? There's three? 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 There's three, and they're all like six or better. Uh, yeah. that, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> Sienna, Elite Snow, Sebulba. So funny. Sebulba. Yeah. Like, yep. what? what is happening? Yeah, I think... I don't know. I mean, I, I am like very guilty of just like straight up hating on some and thinking that he's terrible, which I kind of still do, but like it's like, I haven't seen any of these deck lists, but just like uh, spouting off nonsense here. My guess is that it's like, you know, a good tech against like the meta. Um, like all of his, his sides are relevant. Cause I imagine you're playing a deck with, um, with vehicles and a, like a lot of the decks, you know, have vehicles in, in them that you're playing against. So you can play. I have no idea if this is in there, if this is in their deck, but Sebulba always wins is the card that sticks out as a reason why you might want to play Sebulba, uh, being able to discard Which, support from play. That has one or more tokens on it. Yeah. Like it's very specific. Yeah. That, yeah. That I mean, card. it can, it can blow up um, like crate speeders, like without you having to do anything, it can blow up uh the other one, um, the Hawk, without you having to do anything. And then, like, against the mill decks, you can, so, you know, you, you can put a token on uh, on their, like, Anakin's Pod Racer and blow that up, which is pretty big. Yeah. Um, or if you're playing so. Thrawn Snoke and they drop the Planetary Bombardment. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> totally. A, that, that one will hurt. Yeah. Um, and it's it's uh, any support, too, so it doesn't have to be a vehicle or anything like that. So against the Afro decks, it can, you can get rid of droids. Yeah. Um, Seems like a pretty flexible card right now. Um, yeah, but you have to play Sebulba to get there. Um. <laughs> do you think they? Do you think they like so Sebulba's Pod Racer is a mm-hmm. card that I think I looked at once. So I'm I'm literally just looking at it right now. Yeah, um, and feel like I I'm reminding myself what it does. So it has it's a two cost vehicle, one indirect, two indirect for a resource, one disrupt, one discard, one shield blank. It has ambush. It says, after you resolve this die, you may deal one indirect damage to an opponent, or if you spot Sebulba, deal one damage to a character. Um, do you think they're running that? Is that worth it? I don't know. Maybe. I'm, I'm curious what the battlefield is. Maybe if they're... I mean, my assumption is that they're playing, like, Weapons Factory, but maybe they're playing, like, the Pod Racer battlefield, and they're using that to gain an edge. Um, although, like, you're probably never claiming with that deck, but... I, I honestly don't know. Um, I, I will say some of the things that I really didn't like about Sebulba, um, like the fact that he uh, sometimes has two blanks, um, slash a lot of the time has two blanks, uh, is kind of remedied by the fact that Snoke is there and he has so many focus sides. Um, and being able to Snoke a two 
ranged into a four range seems really good. Um, yeah. so that could be a reason there aren't really that many, um, like three wide pairs that you can do with Snoke where you can actually like pull that off where you can actually hit like a four damage, like, like, a, you know, like, like a two damage base side, like that doesn't exist that often, like for free, yeah. um, on that, on a character that cheap. Uh, yeah. so yeah, like Talzin, I think has one, but, uh, then you're, you know, only in two colors, not in three. Um, and there's so many good cards right now that I think it's hard not to play three colors sometimes. So, yeah. 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 Well, I, I know obviously uh, people who are watching this or listening to this, they'll have the benefit of knowing what was included in those decks, but clearly this was some team effort to get three of these decks into the top 16. Yeah. Um, so including the number one, uh, and number, number two. one seed and number two and, and it's one, two and six. So Garrett, yeah. Uh, Gareth Parfit, Miles Tamplin, and Chris Green, like, well done. Yeah, I, nice. I, I, was, I was texting in our group chat earlier that I love when some secret deck pops up at a big tournament, yeah, and and does well like that. I feel like that those kind of moments make this game feel exciting to me. That you Definitely. could stumble on something that nobody sees coming, mm-hmm. um, and and pretty much everyone I feel like has written Sebulba off, and uh, I don't know, it's intriguing. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, and then there's a there's a Jabba Tarkin mill deck in there. Pretty cool. Pr- Interesting. Yep. Pretty neat. Pretty unique. Um, and then what else is interesting? I mean, there's there's your your typical now um, Yoda, Cassie, and Anakin. There's one, two, three, four of those, I think. Um, yep. So four out of the top 25 percent of the meta. That's not like as much as as some people feared. Um, so yep. that's good to see. Yeah, it definitely for for how much like everyone's been kind of like, oh my gosh, Mill is everywhere. I mean, five out of the top sixteen, like that doesn't seem that doesn't seem terrible. Yeah, me. yeah. I mean, it's it's clearly good, but it's not yes. like uh, so far we we have not seen at this event that it is like the clear dominating deck um, that may yeah. like it may just go undefeated in you know like the top 16 and like you know the top four will be all of those decks but we'll see <laughs> yeah that's always possible uh, now if if yoda anakin cassian wins the whole thing yeah. what do you think we're what kind of response do you think we're gonna screw uh probably see a lot of that played at nova um and then, I mean, my my assumption is that FFG won't do anything until at least after Nova. Um, I have no idea, but I, I can't imagine that like this close to that event. I it, that event is like coming up pretty soon, right? It's in like like a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I can't imagine they make a change like that soon. Yeah, for sure. I think it would be cool if they did, but. Uh, I'm not playing in the event, so <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah, you, you always want the Wild West when you're not playing in the event. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it, it is interesting. Uh, so Bobby Sapphire over at Hyperloops he posted an article about the forty forty idea of increasing decks to forty cards and playing forty minute rounds uh, makes the cards you select a little bit more unique to your deck um and mm-hmm. maybe you're not able to get to those cards as easily and also makes mill a little less powerful um so there's been a lot of good discussion around it um any any quick thoughts i don't want to spend too much time on that but any any quick reactions yeah i i, I do kind of like the idea of a 40 card deck um i don't i don't know about the 40 minute rounds um i kind of like how short destiny rounds are and like five minutes more is five minutes more, but, um, over the course of the day, like maybe that adds up like over an eight round event, like that's, you know, a decent amount of time. Um, but I, I do like the idea of 40 decks, uh, sorry, 40 cards. Like (laughs) there's so many cards now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a 40 deck tournament. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, like there's so many good cards and like, it's it's too hard to to create a un like a unique and interesting deck out of like the thirty sl- card slots that you have. Um, like m- most decks, at least it seems, um, fall under particular archetypes or particular color types, I guess. And then those like always have like 
these specific cards and then you you get like five or six like you know tech cards or whatever you, you want to call them um and to me that's a little boring i would rather it be like uh you you know like it's a staple like 16 to maybe maybe 20 cards that like you play in this archetype and then you have like at least a third of your deck is something that your opponent like you know doesn't always know um i think it just makes for more interesting gameplay um but yeah i i don't know and it, i mean it, like the side effect that it, it makes it harder for mill to win i, I think it's fine um I, I, I kind of get that it's like uh, he's sort of offsetting it by the, the 40 minute rounds instead of 35 minute rounds. So like I, I get that aspect of it. Um, and that 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 could be a good thing as well for the game. But yeah, I haven't really put that much thought into it from a uh, like metagames perspective. Sure. Um, more just from a like game design. Uh, like I want all the games that I play to be fun and interesting and different perspective. Yep. Yep. I'm with I'm with you there. I think. Obviously, changing like a core mechanic of the game, the way that it's designed, uh, doesn't feel like the long term uh, solution because at some point, uh, I don't know that it solves all the problems. Um, it is interesting. I would t- absolutely be interested in like if there was like an online TTS tournament, just trying that out for fun, um, just to see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Because I like different formats. I like mixing it up. I think it keeps the game fresh. Um, but this whole like Milmageddon we're we're in where some people are like legitimately freaking out about it. Uh, I don't know. I guess my reaction to all of this is uh, if it bothers you that much that Mill is successful, like don't don't feel like you have to play the top tier competitive events where you're gonna have to play against a lot of this. You know, play at the kitchen table with your buddies. You know, like go locally. Yeah. I know. <clears throat> Like Jay's been playing on TTS and basically says, "Hey, if you just don't play Mill, like oh, I'll play anything except Mill. <laughs> like you can do that because oh yeah, hey reminder, this is just a game, so right. don't <laughs> don't freak out and start selling a collection because of one archetype that could change in the ne- by November. You know, it's um, mm-hmm. y- it was I don't know the other week we've got so many brand new players here." Um, I was with a couple buddies, Marcus and Nick, and they had never played a multiplayer game because they just started playing in the past couple months. And there were only three of us, and uh, I had my trilogy Rex Clones deck. I was like, "All right, let's let's play let's play some multiplayer, and let me show you this obnoxious way to play this game." And uh, it was hilarious. I mean, we we I genuinely laughed harder in that game than I have in a long, long time um, because of That's because awesome. of all the it, like insane shenanigans that happened. Uh, including, and I'll just tell this story real quick. Uh, so <clears throat> Marcus was playing a trilogy Kylo Snoke deck, and he played the card uh, As You Have Foreseen, which is that card mm-hmm. with ambush where it says, look at not your opponent's hands, but all of your opponent's hands, um, which... That's interesting. Yeah, which I don't think I'd ever noticed before. Huh. But yes, he drops it, so he gets to look at both of our hands and nick just drops his on the table and i'm looking over at nick's hand like oh so you got this he's like he's like oh wait and he like flips it over because he realizes he didn't have to show me and so i'm like real coy and i like put mine no. like face down and i like slide it over to marcus all cool like like <laughs> uh, you don't get to see my hand i saw your handed marcus picked it up and he's like all right he's got a logistics a rex's blaster and it <laughs> and he just like read my hand out loud and it was like such a funny moment because there's nothing preventing him from doing that it's that's good. Uh, That's awesome. I don't know. So it just uh, it's it's moments like that where I'm like, That's I fun. just love that part of the game of getting together with buddies and having a good time. And I love the competitive yeah. side. I obviously like I went to I've been to both worlds. I've been to regionals and store champs and all like I I enjoy that. But don't I feel like sometimes we get so obsessed with the competitive that we forget like there's so yeah. many fun cards. Yeah, how to have play. fun with it. Yeah. 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 Um yeah, I mean, it sometimes like you just got to hang out, have fun with your friends playing the game and like make it about having fun, not about, you know, playing the game. Yeah, absolutely. And winning and whatever. So um, like I, I I've never taken apart my battle droid deck because I have so so much fun playing it. <laughs> and like other guys have requested to play against my battle droid deck because they think it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they even nice. say, like, I don't even mind losing to the battle droids because I think it's just awesome that you have battle <laughs> droids doing battle droid stuff. You have a battle droid deck, yeah. Um, Why not? And so I guess that's where my me- mindset is with the game right now. Like, yeah, Mill is prevalent, and I have been vocal in the past about 
you know, it, like Mill is evil and villainous and all that. And, and part of that is tongue in cheek. And like, <laughs> yes, I, I don't enjoy playing against it, but I also don't fault it for doing well or the people who are doing well. I just know I'm going to continue to have fun and try different formats and keep the game fresh if if that's what I need to do. Um, so. Sounds yeah. good. Do you, do you do anything to keep the game fresh for you? Anything to mix it up if you're not happy with the meta? Um, I, I mean, I usually just try and like bounce around at different like weird random decks. Um, on on TTS a, a couple weeks ago, I was playing. Um, I was just like kind of thinking about cards that like I haven't played with and that seem kind of interesting. And I was like, oh, Grand Moff seems fun to play around yeah. with. And so I built a couple decks like with Grand Moff in it just to try and like do something interesting, do something fun. Um, and it was pretty sweet. So like. If, if if you guys are bored of the game or if you guys are you know like not happy with with where the metagame is at as a whole like just play some random stuff like find some cards that you find interesting not not even like they, like they don't have to be good like the whole point is that it's just something that you would have fun playing with um and just like build something try it out for a couple games and sort of cleanse your palate yep. and uh so i i didn't think about this but i'll give a shout out to our boy jay over double blanks on um thursday nights he's hosting yeah like a destiny casual night. So if you hop on TTS, join their discord, um, they're getting together and Jay has basically put together a doc of just a unique format where he has, has very aggressively um, changed a lot of point costs <laughs> on different uh, cards that don't get played. And then he's straight up banned yep. uh, some cards too. Um, and uh, it's just like a goofy way of trying to get, cards played that we don't see a lot and trying something different and just having a lot of fun. Um, so if that's something, go check out what he's doing. That's on Thursday nights. Uh, I think it's like eight to 10 or something like that, but you can play as long as you want. Um, as long as there's people So go have fun. Yeah. There's uh 38 point cost changes <laughs> Two, 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 no, three character bannings, three card bannings. It's, it's, it's a fun, who, did he who are the characters uh, he banned? Fun, fun time. Uh, Snoke and Yo uh, no, uh, Yoda, Sabine, and TJ. That's right. Yeah, he hates TJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so good. Um, so yeah, so that's just a fun way of um, trying something new. I, you know, and it's interesting too, Mike. Like every time I start building a deck now, I think, should I just make this a trilogy deck? Like instead of building a standard deck, because getting yeah. together with like local guys, especially with how many new players we have, I'm like, it's not, it sounds like an interesting mm -hmm. challenge to build a trilogy deck and try to beat all these standard decks that these new players are bringing and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, all right, let's move on. I just want to do a quick, uh, segment called pleasant surprises. So we've had way of the force in our hands for a while now. And I thought we could each just talk about a couple cards that have pleasantly surprised us. Uh, Mike. So maybe, <laughs> Maybe a card we saw originally, we're like, okay, but now we're like, oh, okay, no, that's that's really nice. That can be very good. So uh, I'll let you kick it off. What's uh, what's your first card? I'm I'm tempted now to say Sebulba, but that, <laughs> that's totally, it's, to, it's totally not true. Yeah. <laughs> um, the first first card on on my my end is um, Beguile, which. I mean, it's not or really an Jay exciting says, card. Bagul. But is that really he, what he calls it? He keeps it? saying Bagul in his TTS videos, <laughs> and, he, and I had to teach him how to say Bagail. <laughs> Bagul, Gabagul, Babagul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Bagul is my is my card. Um, Don't worry, Jay doesn't watch these. He, he admitted, so we, he'll never see yeah. this. <laughs> um, so I mean, it's just it's just really good flexible um mass removal for two resources which is pretty good um it's so, you know sort of similar to like a, a mind trick or something like that but i think it's it's slightly more flexible you can guarantee that you get rid of like your opponent's most powerful die um whereas with mind trick you you can't do that um so it's got some advantages over it uh the amount of total dice that you can get rid of is is you know less but people will play around mind trick now so it's it's harder to pull off a you know a blowout one yeah. um so yeah it's just a card that, that people caught on to i've uh, played it in a couple decks um i i first played it in draft and i was like whoa this card is nuts yeah. um 
And so I'm not surprised to see it in competitive decks. Yeah, and especially in draft where you have to re-roll 400 times to get the, the right side. <laughs> yeah, to get any side that you want. And then when they just yep. <laughs> finally get it and then they just turn it to the blank and you're like, huh. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Beguile's been a pleasant surprise. And uh, it is interesting because... Now all my blue decks are start with two mind tricks. Like it's, uh, it because mm -hmm. we're at a point in the meta where there's just so many good dice, so many good sides that mind trick feels more powerful than it did, like than when say like an awakenings was out and it was just yeah those dice. Um, so it is it does compete in that two cost spot, like two cost removal. I mean, I mean that can really hurt, but um, like I've been running it in the Canaan. Uh, Ayla deck because I find that a lot of times because mm -hmm. of the unique uh, upgrades giving me money back, I I have more resources by the end of the game, so it it feels very yeah. strong, and yeah, I think it it's a great like oh crap moment where you can kind of get out of uh, whatever trouble you're in with beguile. So yeah, yeah, I I also I think it's a pretty fair card. Yeah. Um, like. It still leaves your opponent with with, with two dice at least. Um, well, I mean, if they have three dice out. Um, so I, I I I do enjoy sort of like what it does and how it interacts with the game. Um, I, I think it's a pretty interactive card that you can then sort of like, uh, yeah, like you, you can't get too far behind. Like, yes, they remove your best die, but then you can just like reroll your other two, hopefully. Yeah. So, sure. yeah. Um, all right. So my first card is Rig Detonation. Um, so when I saw this card, cool card, the first thing I saw was the, like the, mo the best art I've ever seen in this game of just this Wookiee yeah. with like, just looking like, uh, I, like he just destroyed an entire planet behind him. Um, it's just awesome. It's a hero yellow card. Cost one. He's, he's got like this, the, the, the blast goggles yeah. on and he's just like, you know, it looks heroes don't look at explosions. Yeah, it might be my favorite art in the game <laughs> for sure. Um, it's pretty great. So yeah, hero yellow uh, cost uh, uh, one. It says play only if an opponent controls the battlefield. So that's a very unique um, condition. But it says deal indirect damage to that mm -hmm. opponent equal to the number of resources they have to a maximum of five. Um, it's a lot. So yeah, so I mean that can be nasty against those decks that really hound resources, especially like Thrawn Snoke and um any mm -hmm. blue villain that's like saving up for that rise again um those type of decks uh but it's just one of those interesting like damage out of hand cards that uh it's it's sort of hard to play around uh because you don't know it's it's yeah. such a it's a weird card where like i don't know that i would play two in a deck but were were you telling me that that, that you played it in your uh saw cassian deck uh yes yes Okay, nice. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love the idea of that to play it like um with like Maz's vault and like outer rim outposts yep. and sort of just like try to like bait your opponent into claiming and then Yes. Just blowing them up. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh, you started your round with four resources and you didn't play an upgrade first round. Okay. Take four damage. Yep. <laughs> um so yeah, so I, I haven't been able to pull that off yet, but I look forward to the the day that I I will. It's just uh, like I said, yeah, I think it just sounds fun. Like these cards, like I love um, cards like Scorched Earth, Strength in Numbers, Rig Detonation, like these cards that free for all. Yeah, free yeah. for all, where you just drop and your opponent's jaw drops, and they're like, "Well, <laughs> crap, the game." Like what just yeah. happened? Um. So yeah, big fan of this card. Can't wait to keep playing it. Yeah, the, out of those, I think this one's my favorite because it is the one where your opponent is most likely to be like, "Oh, I, sh I totally should have should have played around that." Yeah, like like they they will not have seen it coming, but they c totally could have played around it if they did. Um, yeah, that yeah, yeah, that's one of those like if you want to draw a late there. game uh, when like resources tend to like sort of start to pile up a little bit, uh, and there's only one character, so instead of like indirect being spread around, it's just one character um yeah yeah love it all right so my second card is probably my favorite card in way of the force <laughs> um actually I mean, i'm gonna say it's definitely my favorite card in way of the okay, force super right. interesting i i i did not like it when i first saw it i don't i don't think anybody did um maybe, maybe some some people that are smarter than me did <laughs> um but 
that is calling in favors. Um, so th th this is a forecast plot that says before you play an event that costs three or more, you can exhaust this plot to reduce uh, its cost by one or by two instead if you have exactly one character in play. Um, and it's yellow. So this is the card that I was playing, obviously, with Sabine. Um, you know, just all like so the, the the solo Sabine build um, because then all of your awesome yellow hero um, like three cost. Uh, events now cost one which is really really good. So good um yeah i kind of wish that like uh there was a yellow villain that you could play sort of solo um with this but the yellow um uh events like the the, the three plus cost events kind of suck yeah um I, I mean they're they're nowhere near the level of the hero ones yeah. where hero has like tenacity hyperspace jump uh like bravado even like there's never so many the better odds. cards yeah yeah ne never tell me the odds like like holy crap there's like like all of the power cards are in like yellow blue, yellow hero well, three and, cost it's, plus. and it's not just um, like yeah i mean a yellow but even just villain high cost events i feel like just in general just, not just great. aren't as good as hero ones that's um yeah there's there's uh um the one uh, with Vader on it that's like uh, turn all your opponent's blank dice to any side you want and then resolve oh, them against them. Uh, it will all be mine. Yeah. yeah, like that card wins games for sure. Yeah. Um, but it's it's harder to set up. Yep. And it's, uh, you know, like it's blue. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fine if you're playing a two character deck. But like I really, really enjoy playing this with just one character so that you can get like that you know, two, uh, two, two resource discount, like the entire game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like with, with yellow hero having second chance as well, like that kind of, uh, enables the deck. Um, so I, I suspect that when that card is gone, when hyperspace is gone, when tenacity is gone, when never tell me the ass is gone, mm -hmm. when Sabine is gone, like that, this card will not be quite as, uh, as powerful as as it is but it, like it's still interesting in a yeah. more than one character deck it's just not as uh like explosive off the bat yeah so i i, I have a afra veteran stormtrooper battle droid deck that has endless ranks mm -hmm. delve mobilize uh yeah that, other ones that's a cool that are, yeah so sure. like there's some there there's some ones in there because playing an endless ranks for three instead of five uh feels mm -hmm pretty strong especially in a Feels vehicle deck where you, you're just trying to survive anyways um yeah so that's fun i i did i sat there for forever trying to figure out if there's a way to do like a like a ig88 battle droid calling in favors deck and there's just like no mm -hmm. there's just no way like I, there's there's no reason to yeah like i was like because <laughs> it has always been i love ig88 i always loved his like backstories and all that stuff and uh, mm -hmm. I did, I did run that IG Bazine like thermal spread damage deck in uh, Empire War. That was a ton of fun. Uh, Hairless Assassins is what I called it. Uh, but <laughs> it's a great deck. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, I just I, I had a dream, but uh, the the dream has not been realized yet. So M maybe one yeah. day. Well, save save the rebellion, save the dream. I hope they release a new version of IG88. It just needs. <laughs> He just he yeah they I, I feel like they have he to needs some love in this game. he he need, yeah he he needs some to be uh to be shown justice yeah I wonder if uh if he is point cost reduced in Jay's league he better be my gosh yeah he's he's minus one point yeah he could easily be like minus like like two or three points and still be like yeah. barely playable yeah yeah two <laughs> would at least let you play with thousand and then do. Yeah, do like the yeah. Aura Sync, and, and, and then and then it's interesting. Yeah. And then it's interesting. All they all yeah. they have to do is change one of his sides to a resource, so you can bait and switch, and then you're yep. fine. And then and then that's it. And then you you have like a playable character, but it's yep. fine. It was Spirit Rebellion, and we know the Spirit Rebellion problems. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, all right, so my my last card uh, that I've been pleasantly surprised with is Honed Skills. Um, nice. So I don't know. I think the throughout this game they've always released like these like supports that are zero cost that you kind of go oh cool but then you think about like making room in your deck for it and you're like nah not interested um and hone skills sort of felt like one of those like like there was that one did it um it did to me it did to me <laughs> because like i sort of 
I don't know. I guess I just grouped it into these other ones, like the supports that let you like have the one that gives you an extra yeah, shield, like extra and shield, stuff. and you're like, yeah, yeah. So like, what if you know? <laughs> um, but in a like a two character deck where you kind of max out it at certain points with your uh, damage capacity, and you're kind of stuck at that five dice after the other guy dies. Uh, Hone skills gives you a ton of value to be able to drop. Um, well, like for instance, like when I played Ray Ayla at Worlds, there were so many times when it would I'd be down to like Ray, and I need the Shoto's mm-hmm. on her because it gives me those shields, it keeps her alive, also makes the ping damage go through. But the Shoto damage output was super low, and so I'm like, man, I would love to get it, an heirloom on her, but I've got that ancient on her. And I need the ancient to be able to heal, but I don't want to overwrite yet. And like the home skills just gets mm-hmm. around that and says, okay, just drop that extra thing on there and um and wreck face. Yeah. And like I said, I've been playing a ton of built to last plot. And I feel like home skills really shines in a built to last deck um because of all basically giving you all redeploy on your uh, unique upgrades. So um totally. so it's like a regular thing in that deck to my last character has four or five upgrades and I'm rolling out seven dice at a time and saying, go ahead and try to remove all of that. <laughs> just, but because it's just a lot of dice um, with a lot of value. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it, like the thing I like most about it is that it like uh, makes your draws late game better mm-hmm. uh, because you can actually play the upgrades that you draw. And like most of the time you have extra resources by the end of the game anyway. And this allows you to actually make use of your resources to spend on more dice, which help you win. So it's um, it's doing a lot of stuff for you. Yeah, yep, for sure. Um, so have you used it at all? Have you tried it? Um, I tried it in a few decks like early on in the set, um, but I have not been playing much like blue weapon decks yeah. like at all. So yeah, I just have not have not gotten there quite yet, but. Uh, once I get that Kanan uh, uh, Ayla list from you, <laughs> I'll definitely be trying yes. that. <laughs> so see, my heart tells me to run red heroes, but then my head says play blue hero. <laughs> like, because <laughs> uh, clearly that's like. Have you have you ever played a villain deck besides when you played one at Worlds? I was gonna say I two, played two Vader ago. Raider at Worlds <laughs> one. Um, yeah, no, it's like, like, so I was thinking about that. Like, I just naturally gravitate toward hero decks, and I was looking at, like, all the uh-huh. decks I had built. I'm like, I have, like, five hero decks, and I have my battle droid uh, villain deck. <laughs> like, that's it. That, that's all you have and, built. And so I was getting frustrated because I kept having to, like, make these proxies to make all these decks. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I have all of these villain cards. Like, I could make villain decks. I just haven't you, done it. Uh, so, right. um so yeah, it's it is funny that I haven't done it. I I just I had that like I said I have that Afro deck on TTS. I think I'm gonna build it in person, um, just to like mix it up because I do. I only play yeah hero decks. Yep. I am the yeah. host of the Jedi Trials, Mike. I've got a that's true. You know? <laughs> but you know you you gotta know your enemy. I know. Uh, I guess <laughs> I guess honestly I feel like um from my play style like there's. Very rare that like a villain card intrigues me enough that makes me want to play it. Um, that's interesting. Like, I, I what, don't know what, why. I don't know why. Um, I guess for me, I like, uh, I don't know. I, I, I can't even explain it. I, I, if I said it, it wouldn't make sense because you, you could, you could like <laughs> tell me that's ridiculous because I can, I can just like poke holes. You could all do it, it. And so I'm not even going to say it out loud because I know you're going to, but. <laughs> To me, like some of the villain stuff is too straightforward, I guess. Like okay. the hero stuff feels a little bit more like I have to piece it together to make it like be beautiful. And so I just I, I kind of like that a little bit more. Um, <laughs> so and like obviously like Red Hero, you have to work crazy hard to, to win a game. And there's a part of me that loves that like challenge. I mean, that's just because it's bad. Well, that's what I'm saying is like the other stuff is just good, you know, like it's just you like it. You like playing the underdog. Yes, I'd like being the underdog. I like the challenge of like, look what I did, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's fair when you're talking about red hero. When you're talking about blue hero, it's a little bit different. Oh, yeah. I know I'm not the underdog with blue hero at all. For sure, I know that. <laughs> but but with with, with 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 red hero, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, that that's one of the reasons why I, I previously enjoyed playing mill. Um, it's cause that was a bit of an underdog at, at a certain point in this game. Yeah. Um, back in spirit of rebellion, 
slash empire at war. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like to me, um, I like I wish that there were more functional differences between hero heroes and villains. Um, I feel like a lot of the stuff just seems kind of similar. Yeah. Um, and I, I wish there was more of a differentiation between the two uh, in terms of like playstyle and stuff like that. Like more than there is. I, feel- I, I think that they're kind of, that, that they're getting yeah, there. They're, they're like moving towards that direction for sure. Yeah. Like I, you can sort of tell some of the design choices in like the legacies block. Like as opposed to especially like Awakenings early stuff, um, it's like like it, it, Awakenings. It was just like the most basic heroes get shields, villains remove shields, and then mm-hmm. you know like that didn't work out very well because <laughs> removing shields is inherently better than gaining shields. Yeah. Um, well, then so. we had the Vibro Knife un unerratted for a long time, so shields were actually useless. <laughs> So, yes <laughs> very uh, true. oh spirit rebellion <laughs> hey we should have a segment on the show every every week where we just remind people about what happened during spirit of <laughs> yeah about, about, about how how garbage the game was like a year ago but hey hey <laughs> lucas we love you man like nobody... we do we do it was not uh i i would not put any of the blame on lucas to be honest for sure um it, yeah. uh, like a lot of that you just it's yeah, a I mean, new it, game. like it's a brand new game released, brand new concept yeah. it's like yeah they you know like they i imagine didn't play test it enough to know like you know what the problem cards were yeah. um at least you know to any degree of of certainty yeah which i think is backed up by the fact that they've you know like all the cards almost all the cards that they've added have been from like that set yeah <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> um except for my my baby it's a trap i miss that card so much but we won't get into that um yeah we won't because that card's garbage <laughs> oh, but hey going back to villains like i said i did play the ig88 bazine deck but again that's the underdog that's true that's, that's true you that's uh, yeah that, that is very much an underdog yeah. deck so so what, what you're telling me is that you you have in your time playing star wars destiny you've played three villain decks <laughs> i just i need <laughs> like i just i need it to be interesting i need it like i have to work for it otherwise i'm like if i'm just Putting down a holdout like like um, five die villain is seems like the most boring thing in the world to me. Yeah, that, I mean that 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 deck's super boring to me too though. Yeah, like that that is definitely not my kind of villain deck. Right. Um, and I've I've played it. It's it's not my cup of tea. I mean, even even like Boba Phasma to a certain extent is like kind of boring um, at times. And I I took that to worlds, but I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> i kind of just like stumbled into it um but i don't know there, there's some cool stuff out if, there if i were to do it it would probably have to be like using the plots like like i mm-hmm. loved the uh the dooku rebel trader shenanigans you were doing with calling in favors like that's the type of villain deck yeah. i would build and mess around with because i'm like okay that's interesting that, that deck is fun yeah, yeah. um <laughs> and so so maybe something like that um mm-hmm. but yeah, it just I don't know, it takes a lot for me to get interested in uh in villain cards. I don't know why. But Mike, speaking of cards that don't see play um and are terrible. Uh-huh. Uh we are doing a new segment on this show uh called Make It Work. It's a brilliant segment. Make segue. it work work. Uh so uh, so yeah, so anyway, kind of the theme of this episode, we're talking about like Hey, there's obviously cards that get played more than others, and there's some fun stuff out there you can try. So we're just going to encourage like some creativity, some innovation with a new segment <laughs> um, called "Make It Work," where uh, we're gonna we're gonna start by asking our ten dollar Patreon tier, those who support us at ten dollars a month, give us a card uh, that never sees play for whatever reason, a character or upgrade or support or anything. Um, or a couple cards if it's like one of those like you got to work these in together and mike and i will make the best deck that we can using that card or cards we'll film it playing it on tts and put it on youtube um and uh let all of you guys watch us get destroyed it's gonna be great (laughs) um so i think it'll be fun uh i know it's my idea and so me talking about my own idea being fun is sort of you know uh whatever but <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna do this thing mike are you excited or is this uh i'm i'm very excited this is this is totally up my alley i i'm i'm into it i'm, re- I'm ready for the challenge perfect now since we already told people we've we've recorded this episode already i can't surprise you with the card i'm gonna give you nope. uh so you already know it but uh his first reaction was awesome 
uh, because he sort of <laughs> knew what I was going to call out. Uh, but I, but for our very first one, I dude, I I knew I knew before we even recorded what it was going to be. <laughs> um, so we're going to give each other a card or cards uh, to do the first one since this is a brand new segment. We'll film it uh, and put it out sometime in the next week uh, or so. And uh, so, Mike, because I know you are such a fan of the character and the lore, we're going to throw back to old our favorite set in the world, to Spirit of Rebellion, <laughs> where cards were either broken or awful. And uh, yep. I'm giving you Asajj Ventress to make it work. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that that's that that's my 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 challenge to bear. That is, uh, um, it's, it's gonna be great. Can I can I uh, decrease her point cost by two? <laughs> no, you can't. I feel I I feel, I feel like I might be able to make her work if she was ten thirteen. Nope, nope, can't do it. Um, it, it might. Can, can I increase her health by like? No, three? she's she's obviously better than uh, Talzin, and obviously better <laughs> than Snoke, and obviously better than all the other blue. She villains. should so have. She needs to be at twelve fifteen. Eleven health. <laughs> She needs to be twelve. She she right? should have eleven health and four, and she should be eleven fourteen and eleven health. <laughs> so hey, oh, but that man. ability, man, make them discard multiple cards. It's pretty sweet. So pretty sweet. Uh, so <laughs> all right. So I've I've got Ventress and, and I tasked you. Well, for I tasked okay. you. For wait, all right. Where, where were you going to so, go with that? <laughs> the whole idea being that Ventress was terrible when she came out, but maybe just maybe yeah. like. Maybe there's maybe some new there's cards, some new cards that make her legacies great. block and you know wade the force. Maybe there's something that makes her, you know, work a little bit better. That's the whole point of the segment that we've all kind of thrown yeah. some some cards out with the the trash and said we're never going back to this card and we're going to force ourselves to go back to some of these cards and try to make it work. Can I can, can I ignore affiliation restrictions and pair her with Luke? <laughs> hey, that would be pretty sweet, but no, no that's cheating, Mike. <laughs> Damn. You got to make a deck that that you Ooh. could take to like a store champ and not be completely embarrassed, <laughs> and not not embarrass yes. myself. All right, we we shall okay. see. We shall see. All right, and I I am tasking you with making a deck. Uh, I I kind of cheated and and gave you multiple cards, it's but um, I want you to make a modifiers deck. So something with Bomar Monastery and Awakenings, at least. And then all the other modifier cards, if, if possible. That's, hey, uh, so, I, I welcome the challenge. I don't, I'm not going to try to amend it like you amended yours. I, I want <laughs> Bomar Monastery and two Awakenings. Um, and uh, if I, when I play it, like I'm going to make sure my opponent knows we just have to choose my battlefield to make sure that we get full value out of, you know. Like, we can't just roll off and not do Bill Mom Monastery because that would be weird and dumb. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited. Give me, so I, I will, I, uh, well, because we already recorded this, I have the deck built. I just need to record it. Um, so I'm not going <laughs> to spoil it, but I, right. have a, I, I have. And are, are, are we going to, are we going to play against each other or against like someone else? Uh, we could do both. It would be kind of fun to to play each other and then comment on uh, how great the other one's deck is. Okay. Um, we can we we can turn it into a little co-host showdown. Yes. Perfect. Can't wait. Epic. All right. Um, so yeah. So ten dollar Patreon tier. Be sure you uh, throw us some ideas. Uh, send our way any way you can contact us on Twitter, Facebook, on Patreon, whatever you want to do. Um, and thanks for your support. Let's close this thing out. Uh, be sure to check out um, our uh, our producer Dave's show, Inside the Force. Uh, they've been producing a lot of great content just about Star Wars fandom in general. So uh, search it for them and uh, look at the stuff they're doing. We're on Instagram, Twitter, at The Jedi Trials, Facebook.com slash The Jedi Trials, YouTube.com slash The Jedi Trials, where we'll be posting these games. Um, and then if you'd like to support us on Patreon, we've got a $1 tier, $5 tier, $10 tier, and uh, we couldn't do this show without you, so thank you so much for your support on there. Um, shout outs, Mike. Shout outs. I think we have the same shout out. Yeah, we do. Week. I'll let you do it. All right. So, um, if if any of you guys have seen the new card game from Fantasy Flight called Keyforge, uh, Dave and myself are both very excited about it, and so is Jay from Double Blanks, and we have started a 
Keyforge podcast called The Wild Wormhole. So if, if any of you guys out there are interested in that game at all and you're not totally sick of hearing our voices, <laughs> um, go go check that out. That's right. <laughs> we, uh, we're, we're not stopping our Destiny coverage. We love Destiny. Um, yeah. None of that's changing. Uh, we just, it's a good side game. Good, easy, simple side game that has some interesting uh, mechanics to it. And there seem to be a lot of Destiny yes. players who are thinking the same thing as like uh, Keyforge being their main side game. So, um. mm-hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a it's a really good like second game, um, super accessible, super low barrier to entry. Uh, you don't really have to keep up with any kind of meta game. Uh, hopefully, uh, at least I probably won't be. I'm just gonna be playing yeah. for fun. So. Yeah. That seems like the way same, to go. Same, same, same. Because there's no deck building. You just get a deck. You pay ten bucks. You're in the game. So for those who spend all their money on Destiny, it's it's very appealing to say I could just yep. spend ten bucks <laughs> and be done, and that's it. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, check it out. Um, I think that'll do it for this week. Uh, thanks for being patient since uh, this is our second try at uh, releasing this episode. Uh, but yeah, sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's fine, Mike. Okay. Um, But yeah, thanks so much for listening and uh, may the dice be with you.